the Lord. And that's why uh, today's uh, sermon is Help Jesus. Turn with me to Psalms 46. Psalms 46. And we'll read verses 1 to 3. Psalms 46, verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. So we have nothing to worry about, he says, because the Lord is on our side. So what is help? What does help really mean? It is defined as this in the dictionary. It is to give what is necessary to accomplish a task or to satisfy a need, to render assistance, to cooperate effectively with aid to assist, to save, to rescue, to relieve someone in need. It's also to alleviate sickness, pain, and distress of suffering. Help was what we needed when Jesus called us out of this world. It is his help at that time was the first initial action that brought us out of whatever terrible situation we happened to be in at the time. It was a time when we didn't know who to call for help. If we was in our worst state of affairs, whether it was mentally or, or physically, financially, our options had all run out. And we was abandoned and we were on our own and desperate. But Jesus came to the rescue. He came to the rescue and called us. Because we were in bad shape, as it says in Psalm 72, verses 12 to 14. Psalm 72. Verses 12 to 14. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and he will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. So our lives are precious to God, really precious to him. After we have been through all that we have been through, and he finally called us out of the muck and the mire, and he helped us, and that has helped us, that has cleared us away from a lot of the muck and the mire. But even after he has called us, he still keeps on helping us because we truly need to help them. And what is help if you help somebody? It is a lasting imprint that anyone can make on someone or leave that lasting positive impression on anyone who has been helped. And most folks will remember being helped. And who helped them? Now, you got in some cases, some folks might be so caught up in themselves, they might forget who helped them. Yeah, somebody to help them, and, and, and just, uh, you might not even get a thank you. They just get on their way. But it is one of God's number one tools that he uses for us. First, to get our attention, and then to introduce himself to us. It's when he has helped us. Otherwise, we would look the other way like we have been looking the other way. We wasn't when God called us. I don't think no one was looking for him. But he came looking for us because he knew we needed the help even though we didn't know we needed the help. And it's also that help helps us to develop something, which is faith and spiritual strength. Because we're going to need it. So why is this such an effective tool? And it's a tool that can be used on anyone. Because everybody from time to time needs help. There is not a human being on the face of this earth can make it on their own. 
somebody's going to need some help somewhere at some time. And when there's no one else around, here comes Jesus. When you've been in that spot, when all your favors has run out and people don't want to see you coming, close the door and pull down the shades, you are out there on your own. I know we've all been there from time to time. Then here comes Jesus out of nowhere. So sometimes we as human beings, getting help is something that some folks think they're entitled to. But we're not entitled to anything. To tell you the truth, no one is obligated to give us anything. Now, we got family members and close friends can lend assistance, and they will lend assistance to their own and to the people they know for the most part. And a lot of times, you expect that. People expect that. As a just as a as a course of action, you expect for these individuals to help you. Is it their responsibility to help you? One of the catches is, is that when a person receives the help that is expected, <coughs> does he really appreciate the person that just helped him? Or is, is it, well, that's what you're supposed to have done. See, we can get lost in our own thing because we have this expectation of help. And the other side of the coin is when those that we expect to help us do not give us the help we need or has refused the help we need, now, in our mind, that individual is the lowest, dirtiest, low life on the planet. He should be destroyed. No good sucker. He should have helped me. What's the matter? I know he had it. We get to count their money. Hey. I know they got it over there. They balling out of control. Why didn't they give it to me? And this is called, the reason I brought it up, this is called dependent upon man. And none of us is completely dependable for whatever reason. You don't know what's, what's going on with the next man. You might assume. See, that's what, what people do. They start spending another person's money. You, they, they, uh, uh, if somehow they find out what you make, then they start just, uh, spending your money for you, start dividing it up. And then they actually they see where they fit in, where where they they they're part of what what you got. And get me, don't get me wrong, it is a good thing to help people because it, it, when you help someone, you're really helping yourself. And from time to time, all of us have let let somebody down at one time or another. But of course, we don't usually remember that. We only remember those who have let us down. So as Christians, we need to understand this one point. We really need to understand this one point because I've been there. I've been so bad off that, that people didn't want to help me no more. You say, because you were not helping yourself. You were still in the same rut you in. If you didn't receive help from someone that you expected to get the help from, or that you should have gotten it at this time or that time or another, and as Christians, understand this. That means that the Lord did not decide for you to receive it. Because we belong to the Lord. And He is our helper. That is one of the things that we can always depend on God, but you can't depend upon man. Because you don't know what circumstances man may be in. He may not be able to help you. And you may think that He is, but He don't want to tell you all His business. And so you go away angry at the individual. And that's not the way to be because we've got to depend upon the Lord. Once we have been called out and we have been baptized, we have uh, laid on of hands, we belong to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And remember, he said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out to you such a blessing that you can't hold it. From time to time, we go through some things. 
Sometimes at times we might need a little help. It may not always be financial. It could be spiritual. It could be mental. It could be physical. But you can always depend upon him to help you. Now he does use people to render assistance to us. And he, he will stir that individual up. But sometimes it's not in your best interest to get that help at that time. Sometimes we need to learn to truly depend upon the Lord. And to the giver, to the helper, you got the help in the right way. Matthew 6 and verse 2 spells that out. He said, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing the trumpets in the synagogues and the streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they'll ever get. So if you're giving something to, to, to somebody, then now some people can give out of the goodness of their heart because they see the need. Some people will give sort of out of the goodness of their heart, but they got, may have an ulterior motive. Maybe they want to gain influence over this individual or, or to control them. And they do that by giving. And then they will remind them that time and when they gave them this and when they gave them that. <clears throat> and that is sound in the trumpet. When you give somebody, you, you just give it to them and just let it go. It's gone. It's gone. Let them do with it as they see fit. And that's giving with the right spirit. And then your God in heaven will reward you accordingly. As you say, don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. After all, he is in control over all of our lives. We're not in, really in control over anything. And again, he wants us to depend on him for everything, from the itty-bitty little thing that we think nothing of to the great big thing. Now, a lot of times we'll go to him with the great big thing. But he's a detailed God, too. He likes for us to go to him with the little things. So don't leave anything out. And that way you stop depending upon yourself, although you're there to do your part. But you just stop depending upon yourself because you know where your blessings are coming from. You know where everything that you get that is good is coming from. You can't sit there and take credit. Well, I did this and I did that. Although you may have worked hard for it, but it was, it was God that put you in a position to do so. Amen. But at times we do forget. We forget. And that's why some Christians get upset at other Christians. Get downright bad for not lending them assistance at a certain time in which they want this assistance. So if you're going to get upset at someone, you really need to get upset at God. How did that sound? How did that sound? Get mad at him. That, that sounds pretty crazy, though. Pretty, pretty stupid. Because if we understand that he is in control of everything, that means you didn't receive something because he didn't want you to. Amen. You remember the times when he had stirred up people that, that wouldn't give two hoots and a holler about you. That would never in their wildest hallucinations do anything for you. Except maybe hurt you. And where how God can stir them up to come to your aid or even stir up a person that you never know to come to your aid. So if he can do that, he can take care of the rest of it. He's in charge of all of it. All of it. Now sometimes when we get turned down, we might feel bad. But don't, because that is God. God got, he's not going to let you starve or fall off a cliff. Although you might need this and think, think we really need it so bad. And you might. But he wants you to depend upon him, and that's where the faith comes in. That no matter what, you're going to rely on on the Lord. Now he's not asking any of us to be be a bit uh, a bet and go and Shadrach and Meshach to jump in some fiery furnace. No he's not. He's not asking any of us to give our lives or or be at the point where you'll make the decision to give your lives. But he wants us always to depend upon him and trust him that he's got our best interests at heart. And if you get even if you get turned down for for something, it's not to hurt you. God don't do anything to hurt us. You realize that? Everything he does is to help us and to bless us. Although it may not seem like that at the time when you being torn apart or 
when the world is, is getting at you, Satan and his demons is having, their, having a go at you. But God is in control, just like he was as we study in the book of Job. There's hardly no man on the face of this earth who went through what Job was went through. I mean, every aspect of his life was turned upside down. But he still praised the Lord. Now that's, 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 that's a, quite a testimony. Quite a testimony. How many of us, when you are wrecked with pain and suffering, think to praise the Lord? You, you thinking of asking the Lord, take this away from me, but you ain't saying, hallelujah. <laughs> but that is the kind of attitude he wants us to develop, because you don't develop that overnight. That takes training. So sometimes we need a little lesson in humility and gratitude. So we can get so used to getting that when we don't get what we think we need at that proper time, then to us it just means death. And death to the individual that didn't deliver to you. It's like the time when you're raising your kids. Just think about that when you're raising your kids. You can't give them everything they ask for. Because if you do, then the only thing that you're going to raise some rotten, spoiled, selfish, little, precious bundle of joy that nobody can stand. It will grow up and be no good to himself and anybody else. That's why as when we were kids, you remember how our parents denied us? No, you can't have that. You know, left up to us, it would be candy, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No, you can't have that. You got to have some broccoli, some beans, some potatoes. So sometimes no help is the best help we can get. That's right. Sometimes no help is the best help we can get because it's, God is forever teaching us lessons. He's teaching us lessons how to take care of ourselves, to take care of the blessings in which he has given us. He's te teaching us how to, to sacrifice and not always be wanting to get, but also to give. And the Lord is always there to help. It is not one time or one moment that he's not there helping us. Even when we think we're not being helped, he is really helping us. And he's always right on time. He is never late with anything. So we can do it. We can't do it on our own. We never could. And we never will. The Lord help teaches us to depend on him and nobody else. To trust in him wholeheartedly. And not to trust in man. And not to beat up on man when you don't get what you want. You might need it and just go to the, the person at the wrong time. You don't know God may even stir them up to say no. When ordinarily they would say yes. Or they just may not have it at the time or it, it, like that and where you, you feel just just so thrown away, just so disappointed and you get mad and you got some people who lose their whole friendship over something like that. Then they didn't have a friendship to begin with. At least not on their part they didn't. So we should always think twice before we start judging people's motives. First, first of all, understand this, like I said before, if you don't understand anything else, God is in control of our lives. Every bit of it, every step of the way, he's in control. And he's not going to let us get destroyed. We're not going to get destroyed. We might learn a lesson or two down the line. But he's always there to help. The, the, the no help is helping us, and the help is helping us. And we must believe, too, again, that God is almighty. And he is capable of all kinds of miracles. And he does. He created the heaven and the earth and everything that's in it. Do you think that a being that is capable of doing that is not capable of helping us? 
the person that has given us everything and reign over, over this earth, and pretty soon he'll be giving us eternal life, and he went to all that trouble not to help us or, or, or to be playing games with us, some people might think. He, or he just played games. He just want to see me suffer. Like some of the things that Job was saying. He just, you just, you won't even let me swallow, he says. You owe me dead night, night and day. I can't turn my head. Just give me one night, he says. But it was Satan all along that was doing the beating, not God. God was, of course, he was lying, but he was teaching Job something. And he had to teach Job that hard lesson because Job had something deep in him and it took all of that in order for him to learn. And that's the way sometimes we are. We got stuff in us so deep embedded that it takes a catastrophe to wake us up. We are, we are that asleep. We are that asleep. And Satan's going to help us be asleep. He's going to be steady singing that tune in your, in your ear. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. <laughs> so let's remember that God is capable of everything, and he'll never let us down. He'll never let us down, ever. I know it, sometimes we get a little shaky. We get a little doubtful when things get tough. And when Satan and his demon is really having a go at us. But remember this. Satan had went before the throne and asked, for you because God has been bragging on you, his daughter or his son. Have you considered my ser servant so and so? Have you considered my servant Penny? Have you considered my servant Paul? Yes, I have considered them and they doing this, that, and that. Yeah, that's because you give them everything, you protect them everything. Well, why don't you take some of that stuff away and I'll have them to turn away? And the Lord say, No, they won't. Go ahead, take this and take that. He gives them a letter. And you're going to pass the test because we belong to him. We don't purposely go out and do things that is wrong and sinful. No, we don't. Because once you've got the spirit of God, you can could, you could no longer live that, that kind of life that you plot every day to do ugly things. Sometimes we do ugly things because it is in our nature. Because we, for a minute, we don't allow the Spirit to guide and direct us. We, we get back into our old habits. But we got a Savior that is always there, willing to guide us, direct us, and cover up our sins with His blood. Even at times, Satan will use other people to get at you. That's one of his favorite tricks. But understand this, that God is still in control. Our helper is always there to help. <clears throat> Even though you might be miserable for a time, but there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And God will shine that light for us. And we will receive all the help we will ever need. Amen? Amen.